spoke to the renowned author Douglas Rushkoff, who coined the term digital native about his new book, Throwing Rocks at the Google Bus. Your new book, Throwing Rocks at the Google Bus, is really a call to arms about the way the capitalist economy is set up in the world and how it could be better. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. Um, and I, if I, maybe it's less of a call to arms than a recognition of the widespread frustration about how the digital economy has worked out. And what I'm asking people to do, but companies in particular, is to optimize for something other than the extraction of value from communities and the locking away of all this money in share price and capital. You know that the, this is the startup fever. Um, may be good for the one or two people who become billionaires, but it's really bad for everybody else. And it redirects really potentially brilliant digital businesses towards very scorched earth and unnecessarily destructive ends. Indeed, you were saying that the, the, the very disruptive businesses that shake things up in the book or the TV or the smartphone industry end up just becoming part of a bigger cog where, you know, they just belong to a big bank or VC capitalists. Right. I mean, they're very happy to disrupt a particular industry, but once they have you know any measure of success, they surrender all that disruption to Goldman Sachs or Smith Barney or Morgan Stanley and they race for the IPO, you know, and they may get to ring the bell on the NASDAQ stock exchange but that's not a uh, it's not evidence of having disrupted anything it's evidence of having confirmed the centrality of capital to the whole operating system indeed and one of the the examples you talk about is is this extraction of value from from local communities in places they're places where Walmart is not being successful because they are much more successful local supermarket chains yeah not even just local I mean the reason why Walmart is is has hit against a wall right now it's because they are a, a purely extractive business model so the towns they go to end up getting more poor not more wealthy so their customer base even their employee base ends up incapable of serving them anymore and they have to stop you know, where if you have a company that makes your customers wealthy that makes your communities uh, more economically developed and enhanced then you end up doing better business business not worse so companies need particularly in a digital age where all this happens so much faster they need to be more aware of whether their business plan is extractive or generative whether it's a short-term business that you're really building to sell or a long-term business that you want to stay in business for a while one of the points you made is that uh, the cyclical nature of the quarter drives people in a way that's crazy. Poor old Twitter, that's a brilliant small, small single-use company, is suddenly having to find ways to reinvent itself. Not because there's something wrong with Twitter, but because there's an expectation of quarterly growth. Right. Twitter's mistake was selling itself to venture capital and then selling itself to Wall Street in an IPO. So here's a company that makes $500 million a quarter on 140 character messages and it's considered an abject failure by Wall Street and that's because the those investors want to make 100x 1000x on their investment and the problem is that Twitter will now have to sacrifice the quality of what it's doing that Twitter is going to have to destroy itself on some level in order to try to extract more value from its marketplace and the tragedy is that a 500 million dollar a quarter business business is a failure that it can't it can't stay on so what I'm trying to do is to show businesses how they can survive without growing at the rate of, of growth that the uh, their debt structure is demanding of them and you were talking about how Amazon is as innovative and brilliant as it is is actually it doesn't have the book industry's best interest you see it as just another vertical just another monopoly for it to hop over to another monopoly yeah, well, Amazon basically took Walmart's business strategy and put it on digital steroids. So they look at markets the way a conquistador looks at a territory. You know, it's something that you conquer. You enslave the people, extract the resources, and move on. As long as there's another marketplace for Amazon, it's okay that they destroy the book industry, that they destroy the music industry, or now maybe they'll destroy the television industry. They don't care about the health of any of the industries that they're in. 
all they care about is creating a platform monopoly in that industry so they can hop over into another one. And what are some of the things people can do? You've got a, a list of 10 things that people can do to kind of reinvigorate their local, their local economies. Well, first they could buy my book, you know, <laughs> Throwing Rocks at the Google Bus. It was written to give the people the four or five hours they need to correct a four or five hundred year problem. You know, so they won't just get it from this, from this interview. But all of my ideas are really optimized towards promoting the circulation of value amongst your customers rather than taking the value away from them. How do you make other people rich? You know, that's what a distributed digital economy is about that value gets created from everywhere and can be exchanged by everyone there's ways to make tons and tons of money off that if you stop looking at your business as something to sell and start thinking of it as something to maintain